Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Cambridge Union Society for our termly, possibly termly, comedy debate. This debate is very different, well, somewhat different from all the other debates you've seen this term. Instead of having points from the floor, we're just going to have the six speakers tonight, but hopefully they will entertain you enough and it will end sooner. So in our proposition tonight, we have three representatives of the Cambridge Footlights, Cambridge's historic comedy troupe. Fun fact, they got their start in the basement of the Union. We still have a stage, which hopefully someday they'll return to. And um, three up-and-coming Footlights are joining us tonight. They're opposed by three law students. The motion, this house believes the law is an ass. Now, we hoped tonight we would have some fellows from the law faculty. However, unfortunately, Janet O'Sullivan had to drop out at the last moment. But we have three excellent speakers in opposition. Before I begin, I'm just going to a few, make a few quick requests. Those are, if you have a mobile phone, this is a great time to silence it. We'd really like to not be entertained by ringtones, but we prefer to be entertained by the speakers. Also, a point on just respecting your fellow members of the audience. This is a home of free speech. Free speech, in the words of one of the college representatives, is not about free speech is for everyone, not just those who can speak over others. So please do respect your fellow members of the audience. If you have something to say, then uh, please do ensure you don't offend someone else or speak over someone else. The speakers each have ten minutes tonight. It's their ten minutes. Please allow them to do with it as they choose. If they choose not to take points from the floor, that's their prerogative. And if you do make a point from the floor, Wait for a microphone to reach you so that you can be heard. I think that's everything. Enjoy tonight's debate. To open up for the proposition, we have Emma, who's a fourth-year MML student. Emma? Okay, guys, so... 92.5% of asses... Our oh, lawyers, fact. Okay, welcome to the debate, guys. It's going to be a pretty inaccurate and uh, grossly misinformed night, uh, but that's fine. It won't be offensive. It'll just be, uh, yeah, very, uh, very misinformed, but that's fine. I'll do my best. So, as you may be able to tell from our body language, we're totally in favour of this proposition. That's right. We believe that all lawyers are, no, 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 that the law is an ass, that is right. We believe this physically, metaphysically, literally, and actually, <laughs> that the law is an ass. Um, but, you know, I've, more than anything, I'm just so glad that you guys all came, and it's been a long day, hasn't it? It's been a long day. It's been a really long day. We've been up there in the library, down, if it's a lower library, scribbling away, scribbling away, oh God, everybody's dead that I'm writing about, but I've got to write it anyway, and you've had your mum on the phone. Oh, I've sent you a Facebook message, and because of the new system, I know you've read it. I know you've read it. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it from the tip. And then you've got her phoning you up. I found the Instagram app on my iPhone. I found it. It's lovely. How can I touch it without getting the screen grubby? Doesn't make sense, Mum. You've had a long day. So. I want to uh, make you feel a bit better, say, hey, I've got some sweets, guys. Hey, take them. Lovely. Have a lovely day. Really nice. Happy evening. Um, just so you know, if you've touched any of those sweets that I just threw out there, that's private property. You've just broken the law. But, but you loved it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought, okay, all right. I got a little sweet there. Also, I'm going to add another layer to this. I nicked them from Sainsbury's. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I went into Sainsbury's in a poncho. I went up to the uh, cigarette counter. I said, I want a scratch card, please. One pound, five pound, two pound. I don't know, five pound. Fuck it, I'm feeling lucky. And he was getting so confused, slipped them into my uh, jeans, innit? So you've got double layers of nicking there, double layers of nicking, and uh, if you want to have a little suck on that toffee, fine, that's cool, but you are doing me a favour in that you were proving that the law is an ass! Um, interesting logic, just leave that. Um, so, uh, I, you know, just on this subject of nicking shit, um, 
I work at a youth club on Fridays. Yeah, I work at a youth club on Fridays and Saturdays and sometimes Fridays. And uh, I've got a little protege there. I've got a little protege. She's very, very short. Not that young, but very short. <laughs> little Jenny. Little Jenny. She, um, she's had a bit of a hard time of it. She's very urban. You know, they're always urban at these youth clubs. And that's why you need to get them in, ruralise the kids. <laughs> Very urban young girl, and uh, she's got no teeth. Um, that's not so much due to poverty, that's just crystal meth, you know, like a lot of that. Um, and she says to me, Emma, Emma, I've got a hobby. I've got a hobby, and I think that's good because I'm getting off the streets, but you know what my hobby is? It's baking. And for baking, you need ingredients. You do, I've tried it without it, they're shit cakes. <laughs> I need those ingredients, so I go into the shop and I get my flour, I get my bicarb, I get my baking powder, I get my bicarb, I get a few more bits of sugar in that. I buy them, Emma, of course I do. I pay for it, don't I? I say, that's good, Jenny. I whisper that to her because I'm proud. And then she says, but then I remember I don't have any scales. So I see some scales at the back of Sainsbury's and I flip them down my socks. <laughs> And then I ran out and I baked a cake and oh my God, it was delicious and I don't feel that urban and I won't do crystal meth anymore, but I did nick it. And I said, you know what, Jenny, that's fine because I am so proud of you and because the law is an ass, okay? Here, you see, it's progressing somehow. <laughs> um, now, I was, I was saying to myself in preparation, I was saying the law is an ass, the law is an ass. Law, what, but, you know, it's abstract that, isn't it? It's very abstract. It's, you know, it's it, to the point of absurdity, the law is an ass. And I got angry and I calmed down. <laughs> and I thought to myself, the only way I can work this out in my head is by knowing who is the law? Who, what, what is law? What is law? Why is law? Who is law? What does that mean? C'est quoi la loi? Que y es, vale, señorita Margarita. I don't know, I don't know. So I had to think about it. And I remembered, I know who law is. Law is one of the strongest warriors in Tekken. Tekken 1, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, Tekken Tag Team. Tekken uh, Law's Revenge, I think, maybe. Um, and, and I got really excited because he's definitely one of the really strong ones. Really muscular. Um, and then I realised that it's not relevant at all. So, I, I kept on thinking, I kept on thinking, sitting in the library there. And I suddenly remembered... Law is something else. Law is represented to me by one person. Alex, do you want to help me out one second? Who is law? It's Judge John Deed. Judge John Deed, everybody. Isn't that who we think of when we hear the word law? I know I certainly do. And you're also, also a public, so, I, you know, a public's a collective, so I assume you think the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, Judge John Deed, I'm going to point out a few uh, factors of Judge John Deed that help me in proving to you that the law is an ass, okay? Um, so if Judge John Deed is the law, um, then we've got a lot of problems, actually. Okay, so, Judge John Deed, he is stubborn. He's a stubborn guy. It's, uh, it's not always helpful. He's unorthodox in his approach, John. He's very unorthodox. Sometimes this creativity has a whole host of problems. The law is an ass as I am demonstrating to you. George Jandeed does not suffer fools gladly. He's intolerant. George Jandeed cannot stand bureaucracy. He's illiterate. Um, there are often hilarious coincidences in the court of Judge John Deed. Poor guy, he's often got his, his defence there, is his ex-wife. He's got the, the, the propense, is his, uh, is his girlfriend, on and off girlfriend. And so he's biased, he's got a conflict of interest. Often confuses him, it gets him very aroused when he's supposed to be judging Judge John Deed. Um, so again, that is like an ass in many ways. We all know that donkeys can be very biased. We d <laughs> of course, we don't know who to, but that's because they can't talk, okay? They're still biased. Um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, all right, all right, all right, I hear the mutters. Yeah, ah, oh, logic's flawed, logic's flawed. Of course, she does MML, of course, she does a subject which multi-millions of people can do from birth. That is true, it is a waste of my time and it's embarrassing constantly. Um, 
Okay, fine. So scale it down. Scale it down a bit. You're not liking the Judge John Deed example. That's fine. I hate it as well. Um, who else? Who else represents law? Yeah, that's right. Judge Judy. <laughs> Judge Judy represents law. Judge Judy. I hereby ask the defendant to rise. I sentence you to death in the electric chair. You, you are not. You can't do that, Judge Judy. <laughs> You're literally not in your rights. Um, she is actually, interestingly, a qualified judge, though. That's kind of cool. But uh, that, you know, makes it even more clear that the law is an ass. How can that woman have control of law? It's, it's really gross. So, um, uh, and I, I kind of, I'm going to wrap this up now, as it were. Um, I'm going to tell you something, actually. Judge Judy, on March the 23rd, 2011... She's filming the show. She's having a nice day. She had her, um, her coffee in the morning. Quick fag, as she always does before the show. Sitting, enjoying the show, judging a bit, making um, ridiculous judicial uh, ideas, orally. <laughs> and then she collapses. And every, nobody can believe it. She just collapsed. She went to the hospital. She got released the next day. It was all fine. But ultimately, in that moment... This pillar of law collapsed, okay? She collapsed. And for her to collapse once represents to me that law is fallible. Law is crumbling like a falling little donkey. And that is why I say that the law is an ass. And I hope, I hope to the laws above that you will join me in voting for this proposition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emma. Before we continue with the next speaker, I'm just going to warn the speakers, because we're filming this, if you go too far away, <laughs> you're off camera. So if you could try, like, within the first four or five chairs, you'll still be on camera. But if you go beyond that, if you go too far from the dispatch box, you won't be seen. She apologizes. <laughs> to continue, the, to open the up debate for the opposition, we have Julius Handler, who's a second-year Churchill Law student who's not been down the hill since he debated something here two weeks ago. Drinking societies. Drinking societies. Julius, please begin. Thank you very much. The phrase, the law is an ass, is taken from Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist. Most people think this phrase means that the law lacks common sense. It is intransigent. It is stubborn. Ladies and gentlemen, as someone in my second year of studying law at this lofty institution that is Cambridge University, it has dawned on me that the law is not an ass, but it is actually about two things and two things alone. Sheep and bumholes. <laughs> Let me elaborate further. My first argument is that the law is not an ass. No, it relates more to sheep. <laughs> Let me tell you about the case about Crown against Collins. <laughs> Those of you who are laughing are probably law students. And I pity you for that. <laughs> Mr. Collins was a lonely Welsh sheep farmer. <laughs> Need I say any more? <laughs> I certainly will. <laughs> It was a long Sunday afternoon. No one was looking. <laughs> he unzipped. We've all been there. Sometimes twice. In pastoral gaiety, his favourite sheep happened to jaunt along. He was caught deep in sheep. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it was a surprise to me as well to learn that bestiality is actually a crime. I just thought it was frowned upon, like masturbating in law lectures. Those of you who are lawyers, I am sorry, and I will start sitting on my own. Mum and Dad, uh, hi. Um, hi. Well... 
Mr. Collins was, yes, yes, I do masturbate often and frequently. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Collins was indicted and oh I can't believe it. Collins was indicted and counterclaimed. He tried to say that he needed the loo. Just as he was relieving himself, the sheep backed onto him. <laughs> Unfortunately, for those of you who like, and I mean really like, farm an farmyard animals, Collins failed. So, what can we draw from this? Well, first of all, make sure no one's looking. And second of all, <laughs> gag the sheep. But what about bottoms? We all have one. Some of us have very shapely ones. <laughs> Especially Austin Marler. His ass is really quite something. <laughs> By the way, Austin, if you fancy a drink afterwards, you have my number, balls in your court. Um, but I contend, yeah, that, that's where I was, that it's more accurate to say that the law is not an ass, but an arse. Let me tell you about the case of the crown against brown. <laughs> law students again. Did criminal law. This involved a group of 47 sadomasochistic homosexuals and one priest. No, I'm joking. No priests. No priests at all. Um, I think you may be interested in the facts. I quote from the Court of Appeal judgments. Count six. This is what can be best described as genital torture, including hitting the victim's penis with a ruler and holding his testicles with a spiked glove. Map pins were inserted into the buttocks of one of the victims. He'll never date a geography student again. <laughs> Oops. Thank you very much. It's my prop for later. You'll see. Quite a good gag, I have to admit. Count seven. Stinging nettles were applied around the genital area and buttocks of the victim. Looks as if he took the term nature lover slightly too literally. The video film of this incident depicts, amongst other things, one man pushing a piece of wire, and later his finger, down the urethra of another's penis. Doesn't hurt that much, actually. Um, <laughs> Again, Mum and Dad, I'm really sorry. Um, safety pins and fish hooks can be seen inserted through the latter's penis. Um, by the way, if anyone wants to rent this video, I charge a very competitive rate. Great director's commentary. Really good. Um, this is, incidentally, the only judgment I've ever read in full. And I'm not sure if that says more about me or the law course. Um, now, the case of Wilson was distinguished from this case. Um, and the sexual acts here were considered legal. This case involved a cute couple who enjoyed the exploits that any old retired couple enjoy. Long walks, bridge, bum branding. <laughs> In an act of love, Mr. Wilson heated a knife and carved his initials on his elderly wife's bum. How romantic. Ah! No, we're not going to get an R. Ah, that's it. Unfortunately, he had five middle names. <laughs> Since this was motivated by an act of love, this was legal. So what have I said so far? The law is an ass. The law is not an ass, but a sheep. And second, it is more accurate to say that the law is more concerned with asses than asses. But now I come down to my last point. It's not so much that the law is an ass, but more the lawyers are the asses. I don't know if you've ever met a lawyer, but these vitamin D deficient, pasty faced, loner, Machiavellian, bloodthirsty, homicidal losers really are pillars of the society we know and cherish. Take Austin Marler and his rather round derriere, for example. <laughs> Indeed, take me. I resemble a donkey in a number of ways. I'm stubborn. I'm hairy, and I do enormous shits. <laughs> in fact, 
and this is where the prop comes in. Um, I actually had, not that this is at all related to my speech, but I actually had one of my law papers marked from last year. Amongst the angry exclamation marks, can, I can see the words silly, facetious, too much discussion about sheeps and bum branding. <laughs> Um, that was the gag, that was the joke. I'm not using the prop anymore, don't worry. Um, but what about my co-debaters? Well, they say that the law is an ass. And if these two are to go by, then there's plenty of law to go around. <laughs> so what have I said? Uh, first, the law takes into account sheep more than asses. Second, Charles Dickens could only have had bums in mind when he said that in Oliver Twist. And third, it's not the law. It's the lawyers who are asses. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, it's been an honour, it's been a privilege to speak here tonight. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your debate. Thank you very much, Julius. <laughs> On behalf of the union. <laughs> I would say that was uncomfortable at times, but some law lectures have been worse. <laughs> to continue the debate for the proposition, we have Alex McKeith, who's a third-year classics student. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, while it's true that Julius's speech may have been what some people call legally viable <laughs> and may have contained facts <laughs> and also contained his parents, <laughs> nothing, I'm sorry, that was invasive, uh, <laughs> nothing can shake my belief <laughs> in the fact that the law is an ass. In fact, I am so convinced that by the end of this debate, I hope that all of you will agree with me that we should wholesale replace every instance of the word law in the English language with the word ass. <laughs> we will begin with Jude Law. <laughs> Who will become Judas! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the change is negligible. They're both traitors to their lord. Uh, they both are hate figures for Christians around the world. And both will be chewed in the jaw of Satan. <laughs> Proof, if ever any was needed, that the law is an ass, and I hope that very soon all of you will agree with me. Now, Julius was correct that the phrase, the law is an ass, was made popular by Charles Dickens's Oliver Twist, when Mr. Bumby, <laughs> Bumby um, <laughs> says, the law is a ass. Now, we've come a long way since little Oliver's time. Our grammar has improved. <laughs> And we are no longer under the thrall of a terrific musical that will never end. <laughs> but I still agree with Mr. Bumble that the law is an ass. Now, some believe that the characteristic of stupidity is attributed to asses unfairly and that they're actually a lot cleverer than we give them credit for. I mean, we only have to look at the character of Donkey in the Shrek films to know that asses can reach an absolutely terrifying level of intelligence. <laughs> and attain a freakish capacity to speak. Now, I'm not here to tell you that the law is stupid. No. I'm here to tell you it's an ass. And I should make it clear from the get-go that I'm not anti-law. I'm no vigilante. No. I'm ambivalent towards it. Because the law is the only thing that's stopping my dad from practicing as a doctor. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, he was not qualified and he should not have done those things. <laughs> so, let's really get into this. How exactly is the law like an ass? Well, when your lawyer tells you, I think you should plead guilty, you say to yourself, that lawyer shouldn't be talking. <laughs> and when your ass 
tells you that you should plead guilty. <laughs> you say to yourself, that ass shouldn't be talking. <laughs> and he should not be a lawyer. <laughs> and to continue on this theme, oh, I've gone all mysterious. People in the bar are wondering who is talking. <laughs> Will they ever know? It's me, fools. Um, <laughs> Um, in Akon's 2004 smash hit single, Locked Up, um, Akon asks himself, where's my lawyer? This is a question that isn't answered until his 2008 follow-up album, Freedom. <laughs> At some point between those two things, Akon's lawyer must have turned up. In the same way that asses are want to turn up to somewhere at some time. <laughs> and to follow on from Akon, in the same vein as what Akon was probably saying, you don't want the law around in your downtime, guys. Your personal time, because that's your time. <laughs> and you don't want a donkey there either, trotting around, giving it all that, all the shit about hay. <laughs> you don't want a lawyer there when you're having sex. Even if you're having sex with a lawyer, you don't want that lawyer there. <laughs> and the same can be said of an ass. So whether you're getting down with a lawyer or an ass, you'll have that same feeling of self-loathing, mild terror that they'll kick out with their hind legs, always a risk with lawyers. You know, my mother told me, never stand behind a lawyer. Of course, they need to stand behind you so they can stab you in the back, obviously. As Julius's namesake would know well. <laughs> so on that physical theme, let's turn into the face of an ass. Not collectively, that would be weird. Yes, the face, which is the window to an ass's soul. And also the window to a lawyer's inside parts. Now, asses are traditionally conceived to have long faces. So when seeing one, you might ask, if you're in a jovial mood, why the long face? The answer is that donkeys suffer from severe depression. <laughs> You've put your foot in it. And length in body parts can also be attributed to the law. Um, for instance, when you say the sentence, my body got nabbed for carjacking, he was caught by the long arm of the law. Yes, he was. You'll focus on the identity of the law as some sort of freakish, hellish mutant, Mr. Tickle on roids, grabbing people from the depths of hell, pouring them, gently caressing them into the inner depths, into Satan's belly, the clustered nucleus, the inner sanctum of confusion and terror. But we began with the face. And let's go back to the face. The law doesn't have a traditional face, but I'm sure its metaphorical face would be long, like an ass's. Why? It's Satan's work. <laughs> now, there are lots of varieties of acids, from feral to domesticated. And exactly the same division applies to the law. Isn't that right, law students? Don't answer. I am wrong. <laughs> now, the feral variety or strains of law are the kind you don't mess with. That's kind of like human rights and murder. The kind, if you violate it, it will kick you in the fucking face. Domesticated law is a kind of law you don't really have to give a shit about. Um, that's like piracy law, <laughs> tax, <laughs> or credit card fraud. <laughs> Thank you, Beth and Peters, Hartlepool. <laughs> it's fine, she died. <laughs> now, asses are used commonly on farms for hauling heavy loads. You might say their main attraction is their pulling power. <laughs> and if any of you have gotten close to a lawyer recently or been on a dance floor with one, you'll know that they're pretty nifty with a cart. <laughs> now some quick fire comparisons. Strap yourself in. There is a great difference between what you intend to do with the law and what you can do with the law. And believe you me, the same applies to an ass. The law can take many forms as can donkeys. I mean, I went straight to sheet over a donkey and pass it off as my mother. 2001 census, thank you. <laughs> and the law was made to be broken, just like donkeys. 
glad we don't have any animal rights activists in tonight. It is true, they're beasts of burdens. You use them till they die. <laughs> now, asses are traditionally, they're very long-lived. And the survival of law in one form or another reflects this general hardiness. Studies have shown that when fed well with regular worming and general health care, lawyers can live for over 30 years. <laughs> I look forward to your continued existence. <laughs> now, both the law and asses have great potential to change. I mean, the law can obviously develop on any number of issues, from caps on government spending, to how many animals you can fit in a lift, to how much change you really should be giving to a beggarman. Um, the law can grow and mature. And likewise, when you look at an ass, you know that thing's not done yet. You know that ass has the potential to grow into a horse, or a massive fuck-off dog, <laughs> or even a lawyer. The possibilities are literally some. <laughs> it's now conclusion time in the union. I am unequivocally for this motion, because the law simply is synonymous with ass. Asses exist. The law exists. <laughs> The law is an ass. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of logism, a syllogism. <laughs> One for the philosophers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to my rambling argument. I hope you believe the law is an ass. I'm sure I do. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you very much, Alex. To continue the debate for the opposition, we have Jinho Clement, who's a third-year lawyer from Corp. The law is not an ass. And I'm going to give you three reasons tonight why this is so. Firstly, you got the wrong animal. And I'm going to give two more reasons later on. <laughs> the law is not an ass. It is an elephant. Elephants stink, they're too big to control, they hurt weak, powerless things. And also, elef elephants have long noses. P Pinocchio. <laughs> There's a reason why the Urban Dictionary says, in one of its definitions of law, that law is a common misspelling, lawyer is a common misspelling for liar. And it's not hard to tell when a lawyer is lying. You just watch whether or not his lips are moving. <laughs> I've just falsified my own argument. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it again. And again. The law is not an ass. It's a chameleon. You know chameleons, right? They, 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 they're really good at disguise. Um, they, they stand on a tree bark that brown, on a leaf green. And likewise, the law is really, really good at, at undercover stuff. Think about the police. If you see the police as the law, really good at this stuff. I mean, think about it. When is the last time you saw a police car in Cambridge? Or, like, who are these guys next week running for police commissioners? Really good at these things. Uh, the law is not an ass, it's a unicorn. <laughs> What's a unicorn? It's, it's you know, this mythical, made-up creature. Um, doesn't really exist. Um, who, who makes them up? People who believe in fairy tales a long time ago. I think about a time when you wanted to go out when your mom and dad you know, went out at night. And they say, hey, don't leave the house. The boogeyman will get you. Boogeyman doesn't exist. It's a way to control the little ones, a way to control the masses. In 1735, Parliament, your Parliament, I, I, I'm not British, <laughs> passed the Witchcraft Act. Get rid of witches. Um, 735, 1735. In 1944, two people were charged and convicted of this, gotten rid of. Um, one of them, Helena Duncan, she, she wasn't a witch, but they, they thought, we think she's a German spy. Uh, 
Let's just get her. It's the way to get people. It's a unicorn made up way to control the masses. I have a better one. The law is not an ass, it's a zebra. Not a zebra. Zebra. <laughs> you look at a zebra, you, you, not that you're one, but uh, you look at a zebra, you're not sure whether it's black with white stripes or white with black stripes. You look at the law, there's a rule, there's an exception to the rule, then there's an exception to the exception and an exception to that. And, and, and when you go to the court, hey, I, I, got, I got a rule claim, um, judge says, oh, there's an exception to that. And it's really confusing. The law is more like, more like a zebra. Um, better still, I got one more better one. This one you will like. <laughs> the law, it's not an ass, it's a trapdoor spider. <laughs> it allures the unsuspecting. Let me give you the case of Williams and the director of the public prosecutions. Um, a bunch of policemen in northeast London were a bit bored. Um, not enough work. They got a van, stashed it up with, with cigarettes, uh, cigarette boxes, left the van in a really busy place, shopping area. Let's leave it at that first. What do trapdoor spiders do? Um, they create a trap, dig a hole, use their little silk, cover it with the same color as the as ground, and they wait for their prey. Uh, one prey comes. Oh, that's too tiny, we'll leave that. The big one comes, they jump on it. So, so this, they, these policemen did, did just that. They had this van, didn't lock the van, left the door open, people could see. Some little boys came and said, hey, what's in here? Um, Policemen didn't do nothing. Small, small guys, go away. The big guys, the big fish come, and they jump on them. <laughs> Go to court, they, and the court says, hey, uh, that's fine, you know, you, you stole it. The law is not an ass, as, you, as some of them might say it is. It's more of a trap or a spider. Now, if you're not convinced by those lousy arguments, I got two more arguments. One is that the law is good for you if you're one of the following two types of people. The first type of people is, is best described by the case of Kautz, the queen versus Kautz. Now Kautz, he was charged with murder and convicted, in fact. And the evidence at hand was that he had just left this house and in the house there was a body burning. Um, in fact, left naked and strangled. He's convicted for murder. And at the court of appeal, he goes, oh, human rights. Um, and he argues, oh, it was consensual sex. Uh, asphyxiation. Um, and the court says, stupid judge, you shouldn't have convicted him. It, it, you should have considered manslaughter. So if, if, if you are, or some of, some of you here tonight, not looking at anyone in particular, um, are in, interested in that kind of stuff, the law is in your favor. <laughs> and therefore, it's not an ass. <laughs> or if you're not that sort of person, you don't quite relate. Uh, most of you here are here because you afforded a union membership. You're posh. The law is in favor of the posh and the rich. Um, this is a true story. A few days ago, some guy was on a train and he, a government official left some papers there. And in, it, is, it seems that the government here is planning um, this device called a force field. Um, it, it deflects energy. And uh, it's based on prototypes by George Bush and um, um, uh, Silvio Berlusconi. And what it does is, is that it uses, um, it, it works in a way that it deflects uh, prosecution from, on, on human rights charges, war crimes, uh, this kind of stuff. And so you guys out here, posh people, it, it may be good for you. So that's my first argument. If that doesn't work for you, you're a nice person, you're rational, you're moral. I have, I have another set of arguments for you. Firstly, the, we don't ever play Pin the law's tail. You, 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 you know the game Pin the Donkey's Tail? You have a donkey on a board, uh, you, you blindfold it, you have a tail, you try to pin it on. But the difference between that game and the law is that in that game you play it in parties. This game we, 
play between parties. I have one final reason to appeal to all of you tonight. Before that, I'm going to say something else. You came here, a lot of you came all the way. Um, you, you, you skipped some essays, you braved the cold because you thought Dr. Janet O'Sullivan is going to be here. I thought so too. <laughs> Four o'clock I find out that I have to be here. Are you expecting somebody who is, you know, tall, white, <laughs> female, graduated? Uh, <laughs> you find me. Is the wrong animal. And today, the ass is the wrong animal for the law. You've got better animals. And if you don't believe that, my, my dear friend here pointed out that if the law is not an ass, it, it, which it is not, it is the lawyers who are the asses. And look at me. I've made an ass of myself tonight. <laughs> and therefore, the law is not an ass. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jinho. To close off the debate for the proposition, we have John Bailey, who is a student. John. Why is it an elbow? Because, of course, you know, it hides its ugliness beneath the suit often in the court of law. And... Ass. Fuck. <laughs> Never tell the difference between those two things. <laughs> Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Luckily, many of my arguments still stand. <laughs> um, because fundamentally, I mean, you know, we have many types of law in this country. You know, we've got civil, public, pussyga. <laughs> Think about it. Come on, come on. Need you on board here. Um, but, like, fundamentally, the law is weak. Even, even in the Cambridge Union, the law cannot protect the innocent victim of violence. <laughs> See? <laughs> Nor can it protect this institution from theft. <laughs> or hooliganism. That might have watered down the microphone a bit. They can't see me anyway, now they can't hear me. This is fine. Sensory deprivation for those in the bar. Um, not only that, but it can't even the law protect you, the members of the audience. Because I can just slander you. I mean, who knew, and I've done my research, that this man, once in his mother's kitchen, blended an otter. <laughs> And did these so-called law students do anything to prevent that? <laughs> Either that crime or my own. Which I think was more, you know, on the Assange defence, just bringing to light what needed to be brought. <laughs> and no concern for responsibility. No, they did nothing. Um, and not only that, so the law is an ass. That's my concluding point for that section, obviously. Um, but I have a game to play to test... Now we've discovered my prejudices, your own. Can you, the audience, tell a difference between the practitioners of law, or lawyers, and an ass? You, sir. You, sir. Let's play lawyer or ass. Lawyer or ass. Ass. Yes, correct. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. You get a point. And what the points mean? Prizes. No points mean you'll get your driving license revoked. <laughs> This is actually a Greek ass, and you can see here in the uh, bag here, actually has the entire wealth of Greece as a nation <laughs> at, at the present time. 
Um, the prize you get is a picture of a Greek ass. Um, so, let me see. You, sir. Lawyer or ass? Lawyer. Yes, correct. It's correctly identified Atticus Finch, the lawyer. Um, Atticus Finch displaying that even if you are a lawyer, you can still have good morals, be upstanding, you know, have good principles. Atticus Finch is, of course, fictional. <laughs> um, let me see now. You, madam, lawyer or ass? Come on. Correct, actually. I didn't expect this. This is, of course, a type of ass, a Philip Gl ass, the minimalist composer. Bit of a niche reference, if I'm honest. Um, not sure how I knew that was going to go down. But in respect of that answer, this one should be easy. So let's say you, sir. Lawyer or ass? Oh. <laughs> Yes, that's not one of the uh, allowed answers, but... Definitely. Um, elbow. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to accept your first answer, which was correct, both! Fidel Castro, ass of course, but also Fidel Castro trained as a lawyer before becoming a tyrant, like all lawyers. <laughs> Please accept this gift. Um, yes, <laughs> don't worry. So, of course, the um, defining feature of an ass generally is the uh, ability to carry heavy loads uh, and or messiahs into Jerusalem. <laughs> um, but how does the law support Jesus? How, how did the law treat Jesus? Very heavy-handedly, it must be said. <laughs> they literally crucified him. <laughs> um, and what's more, like... The, the penalty for that, like within, within like Western culture, I mean, on the statute books, like if you're so much as suspected of killing Jesus, like you get like 2,000 years of horrible persecution of your entire race. I don't think that's fair. If Jesus is killed again, and bearing in mind the first prosecution was on the most nebulous of evidence, at best circumstantial, at worst mythical. Um, But if Jesus comes to earth again, and I understand there is popular support generally for that, you know, or has been in the past, less so now. If Jesus comes to earth again and is killed again, I'd like to see the perpetrators given a sentence more inclined with like, in line with like, ideas of rehabilitation back into the community and fewer pogroms. Um, but conversely, I would uh, remove any penalty in the law for killing the Dalai Lama on the grounds that his death merely facilitates recycling. <laughs> Kill him one place, just reincarnate somewhere else like a holy whack-a-mole. <laughs> Being hit with the mallet of Chinese culture <laughs> and the penny arcade of international politics. And your law, people, your law allows that to happen. A cogent argument with which I'll finish there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. To close the debate for the opposition, we have Richard, who is a, an LLM student and was a semi-finalist in the Home Counties Basket Weaving Competition of 2007. Richard. Thank you very much. I'm going to wrap this debate up for the opposition and indeed the debate as a whole. But don't worry, I'm not actually going to wrap. I was going to, but we've already had enough acorn for the whole decade, so I'm, I'm going to move on. It's not just practicing lawyers who have a lot to live up to, ladies and gentlemen. I've learned quite a bit from my three and a bit years of studying law, too. My DOS, Director of Studies at the end of last year, said to the lawyers at Pembroke, three years ago, when somebody asked you a legal question, you'd honestly say, I don't know. Now, can truthfully say, it depends. <laughs> Studying law, ladies and gentlemen, is the way forward. Law gets everywhere. 
For those of you who have been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to visit the Fitzwilliam Museum, you will know that there is a giant killer whale skeleton there. It was not stolen last year. In fact, I think the Fitzwilliam Museum actually had a skeleton chip for the security guards for that exact purpose. No longer does it say killer whale skeleton, ladies and gentlemen. The law faculty professors have been there, and it now says alleged killer whale skeleton. <laughs> on our streets. I was walking to Waterstones the other day to pick up yet another law textbook when I was approached by a man in a suit with a clipboard. He said, Sir, have you had an accident? I said, You cheeky bastard, I always look like it. He said, No, 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 an embarrassing accident in the last few weeks. And I got excited. He said, Why? He Your said, microphone isn't working, so you just oh. He said, Why? Sorry, I said, Why? He said, you could be entitled to some compensation. And I got really excited. <laughs> Turns out that drinking seven pints of real ale, sneezing and pooing yourself is not an accident. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose! <laughs> but I digress. We're here for a debate. Some of you may be wondering when I'm actually going to make some arguments. Anyway. We're here to debate that the law is an ass, or perhaps an arse, if you're not from a country that considers Mitt Romney to be a viable presidential candidate. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Austin. Seriously, guys, can you imagine if Mitt Romney had been president when Sandy hit the East Coast? Ladies and gentlemen, run to your shelters. Women, remain in your binders. <laughs> so how is the law like an arse? Well... I'll admit, I'll admit, there are some similar characteristics. It stinks. And even though it acts like it gives a shit every once in a while, it's always facing the other way. <laughs> Turning the other cheek, if you will. But, while a human ass only has one hole, or several if you're into the kind of things we've already heard about, <laughs> it has even, the law has even more holes than the case of side proposition today. The analogy they wish to draw, or, if you will, the anal a g, <laughs> doesn't hold. And as a result, you should not believe their side. The law is not an ass. But it could be an ass, like a donkey. After several years of living in Northumberland, I consider myself quite an expert on donkeys. Sometimes I like to stand behind them and make loud, sudden noises. Because that's how I get my kicks. On one of his crazier days, my father approached me and said, You're right, son. You don't know, this is a great impression of my dad. <laughs> You're right, son. Think about buying a donkey. I said, Come on, dad. You're doing the Shrek thing already. It's, that's, you know, it's not going to work out well for you. But uh, nevertheless, we drove down to the farm. And uh, like all good farmers, um, the farmer that we spoke to was from the West Country. And uh, so my dad asks him, is it uh, is important which side of the donkey is hairier? And the farmer said, Oh, it helps if it's hairy on the outside. <laughs> and my dad asked, How long should a donkey's legs be? And the farmer said, Long enough to reach the ground. <laughs> that donkey over there he seems to be having some kind of seizure. And the farmer said, Oh, he always does that. So how is the law like a donkey? I mean, it's not. That's why I'm on opposition. Um, in preparation for this debate, I dug a little deeper, rather than just, you know, telling some jokes. And my research showed a little more. That the law is an ass is a quote from Dickens. Perhaps this will give me the answer to this debate. Or at least an additional answer to the fantastic ones we've heard from side opposition. So Dickens, the classic English author, the bane of GCSE students around the country and a brilliant writer. And people aren't really reading Dickens anymore because, you know, we don't have the attention. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, okay. Now, other people don't agree. And in doing my research, I happened upon a review of the complete works of Charles Dickens. Unabridged. And normally I would just click right on past this, but I figured I should provide you guys with some real evidence. 
So Dickens Complete Works. I think you'll agree it's quite a big deal. It's pretty good. It's a sizable tome. The review went something like this. The title was one word. Weak. That's quite a claim, I thought. Let's read on. I was very disappointed with the quality of the paper. It felt like it would rip just by turning a page. Right, what you've done there is you've not reviewed the complete works of Dickens. You've reviewed paper. <laughs> Quite different. Is there more? There is. The language is quite outdated and terrible for most people to understand. Okay, aside from the fact that's just not true, you can't say terrible for most people to understand. That doesn't make sense semantically. So you're terrible to understand and a cretin. <laughs> Which is some rebuttal to the idea that grammar may have improved. I can do debating. <laughs> he fi fi finishes. Let's hope he doesn't write any more of this crap with two Ps. Well, there's not much chance of that, is there? So Dickens was onto something, perhaps, but his explanation was weak, so you shouldn't buy it. We have to remember that in debate, we're all about nice arguments or clever analysis, or, if you prefer, jokes about donkeys and how nice arguments is an anagram of anus cement rig. <laughs> Those of you who are going, <laughs> yeah, you're the law students. Ladies and gentlemen, I really, 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 really love legal loopholes. That's why I've been studying law. But after three years, I've learned that it's not just enough to get off on a technicality. In actuality, I think that law is more like a sausage. A lawsage, if you will. That's my favorite kind of logism. A neologism. <laughs> One for the linguists out there. The more I think about it, the law is like a sausage. Because no matter how much you respect or like either of them, it pains you to see either being made. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg to oppose. Thank you very much, Richard. Before we go, I have tons of announcements, but that's fine because we're running way ahead of schedule. Uh, first announcement is that if you're interested in getting involved in the union, I don't know if Ben mentioned this, but if you're interested in getting involved in the union, you don't know what opportunities there are, you just want to find out more information, or if there's even something specific, there's some sign-up sheets in the bar. If you drop your name and email on there, we'll get in touch with you with some of the opportunities we have. There's some low-commitment stuff, there's some high-commitment stuff, there's elections right around the corner. Uh, nominations for elections open tomorrow. The returning officers are myself and Alex, the vice president. So email us at ro at cus.org if you'd like to find out more about the opportunities available there. But there's plenty of other ways to get involved. Other than that, further announcements. There's an item in the term card. The U.S. ambassador is coming to speak about, well, about America, really. He will, uh, the date and time are not in the term card. We can now announce that the talk will be on Monday, the 19th of November at 7.30 p.m. We hope as many of you as possible will join us then. It promises to be an interesting talk, especially in light of the fact that it was President Obama who appointed Ambassador Sussman as ambassador to England. The only other announcement is when voting, please vote with your feet. The door by which you leave is significant. You'll be counted on your way out and we'll find out if the law really is an ass. Thank you very much, and have a great night.